Good morning, everyone. This is John Swills. I'll be your host of today's webinar, Market Neutral ETFs in a Volatility Context. We'll get started in just about two minutes or so. What we want to do is allow those that are coming a little bit late uh, to go ahead and get dialed in. So if you don't hear any sound or you don't see the slides moving right now, don't worry. The webinar has not started. We'll get started in just about two minutes or so. Thank you for your patience. Good morning for those again that have just joined us. This is the Inside ETFs Canada webinar series. I'm John Swolse, your host for today's webinar, Market Neutral ETFs in a Volatility Context. We'll be getting started in just about 60 seconds or so. We want to give those that are a little bit late uh, the opportunity to dial in. So if you haven't seen the slides move, the slides move or haven't heard uh, any sound yet, don't worry, the webinar has not started. We will get started in just about 30 seconds or so. Thank you for your patience. Thank you to everyone for your patience. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, my name is John Swolf. I'm the CEO of Inside ETF and your host for today's webinar. Uh, today's part one of our, far, of our five part webinar series is market neutral ETFs in a volatility context. I'm hugely excited for our five part webinar series kicking off right now as we're and running through Thursday afternoon. Over these five webinars, we hope to share actionable insights, first-hand knowledge of these unique ETFs and investment ideas. As you can imagine, uh, we're covering volatility today, as it certainly has caused quite a bit of gray hair uh, over the past few weeks. I think from mid-February uh, to the beginning of April, that six-week period uh, was quite volatile for investors, like I said, causing more gray hair than we've probably seen in the past decade or so. So today, with uh, the help of Desjardins, we're going to talk through uh, a few ways that you may be able to go about eliminating some of those gray hairs for both you and your clients uh, as you look to smooth out the ride for them. Uh, the product that we're going to talk about today is an ETF. It's the largest uh, within its asset class in Canada with over $250 million, uh, of assets under management. What's really exciting to me about this ETF is that uh, it's brought in over $100 million this year alone. So you can see that investors are, are speaking with their dollars. And what's even more interesting to me is that this ETF is part of a larger uh, strategy that they've been running for institutional clients. And the combined two strategies has over $420 million dollars uh, invested against it. So again, as you can see, uh, investors are speaking with their dollars uh, as we go through this. So again, hugely excited for our five-part webinar series. Today we're talking about market neutral ETFs um, in a volatility context. Before we can go ahead and dig into Tommy's presentation, I do want to walk you through a few of the housekeeping notes in order to enhance your webinar experience. At the bottom of your audience console are multiple application widgets you can use. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can click on the Q&A widget at the bottom and submit your question. We ask that you submit your questions in real time, and we'll do our best to answer all of them at the conclusion of today's webinar. If a fuller answer is needed or we're unable to get to your question, we do capture all questions and we'll share them with our speaker, uh, and hopefully they'll be able to go ahead and reach out to you to get you an answer. You can also expand your slide area by clicking on the Maximize icon on the top right hand of the slide area or by dragging the bottom right corner of the slide area. So again, you can manage the size of the slides that you see within your screen. Many folks always ask if there's going to be an on-demand version of this available later. Of course, there will be, uh, and that will be sent to you approximately 24 hours after the conclusion of today's webcast. You can access that replay by using the same audience link that you use today uh, to join us here at, at 10 a.m. But again, you will receive uh, a reminder email when you're able to go ahead and access that. Uh, I'm hugely excited today to be joined by Tommy Nguyen. Tommy is the head of global equity and co-manages uh, Desjardins Global Asset Management's equity strategies as well as the market neutral strategy. Additionally, Mr. Nguyen is a voting member of DJAM's Tactical Asset Allocation. 
And before joining DJAM in 2015, he worked as a senior portfolio manager in alternative strategies at Professionals Financial. Mr. Nguyen has a degree in software engineering from Concordia University and an EMBA executive master's in business administration from the University of Asabaca. Uh, I, sorry about that. Athabasca. Apologies, Tommy. Tommy serves as a mentor for the Kenneth Woods Investment Management Program at Concordia University. And for those that may not know, the team at Days Are Jan uh, manages the largest alt strategy in Canada in both the ETF and institutional assets, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the market for liquid alt ETFs launched in early 2019, and these products have seen uh, inflows pour in, uh, especially to the tune of $250 million, uh, into Tommy's product. As I mentioned, Tommy and the team have gathered more assets than anyone uh, with a track record predating their ETF. Again, speaking to that larger $420 million uh, that they have earmarked to the strategy. I was talking with Tommy a little bit earlier before we got started, uh, and he let me know that he has a lot to cover. So with that, I want to go ahead and get out of the way. But again, I would encourage the audience to submit questions. Uh, we will do our best to answer them at the uh, conclusion of today's webinar, and you can do that using the Q&A widget at the bottom of the screen. With that, I would turn it over to you, Tommy. They're all yours. Hey, thank you, John. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, John, again for, for the introduction. Well, uh, you know what? Thank you, uh, everyone, for attending this webcast on a beautiful uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, for sure, we, we certainly live in very, very interesting times, uh, a balance between a, a world that's pre-COVID-19 a new normal. So let me briefly introduce myself. I know John uh, did it already. So, so again, my name is Tommy Nguyen, and I'm very delighted uh, to be here today to talk to you about a unique product that I, I, I myself and Jerome, which is the other co-manager, really believe in, uh, the Desjardins Global Asset Management Market Neutral ETF. The symbol is D-A-N-C. I would call it DANK. Uh, we think that adding alternatives with low volatility and low correlation can enhance the portfolio's long-term risk-adjusted return and help your client reach their long-term return objectives. So, so my presentation today uh, is divided into five parts. I'll start by, by answering the question, who we are, then I will look at explaining the structure of the market neutral or market neutral, followed by why are we unique and different from our peers, then I'll explain how we do it, and finally show you some interesting stats. So, so why don't we start uh, the presentation? So, so who are we? So my, my team, the, the equity team, were eight investment professionals managing over $5 billion assets of equities. We are part of the Desjardins Global Asset Management, or we call it DGAM. DGAM is the institutional arm of Desjardins and manages over $70 billion of assets for our institutional clients. Now for the second part, the, the most interesting part is the structure of the market neutral strategy. So, so let me start by, by answering to this question. So, to, uh, ba so basically, what's a typical structure of a long, short, or market neutral strategy? Assuming a $100 million fund, like a typical alternative, long, short, market neutral, I would say would be long between 20 to 40 they call high conviction stocks, and then selling short 20 to 40 stocks that they don't like. They would then put all those stocks, the one they like, the, the one they don't like, into a fund, mix them together, and apply two, three times leverage. That's a typical hedge fund. What's the structure of our ETF, the DANC market neutral structure, and its objective? So first of all, our structure is easy to understand. So we built this strategy for the easy to use, easy to understand for, for basically for you guys to basically explain to your clients and, and hopefully they will extend our strategy. We take the whole 100 million and we buy safe and liquid money market with it. We then use the money market as collateral and use up to a maximum of 50% of it and deploy it into many many pair trades matching a stock that we fundamentally like we call this a long position with a short position most of the time and that's very important most of the time the same sector so this way we could eliminate the sector and the overall market risk 
Second of all, our pair trades are always between 1% to 5% of the total value of the portfolio. In fact, 80% of the time, it's only a 1% pair position. We even have a stop loss. So when a pair, a long and a short, loses more than 0.2% of the portfolio, only 0.2% of the portfolio, it is automatically unwind. So our yearly objective, okay, for for this ETF is to generate four to five percent over the return of the money market. So we aim, we aim an absolute return of somewhere between five, six, seven percent every year in every single market condition. So so now that you understand the strategy structure, okay, let me explain to you why I think we're unique. And why are we different from our peer group? So, so this point is 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 well, my my favorite point when when I do a presentation um, uh, on this product. So, so first of all, number one, like you have to understand that we don't have any market exposure since we do pair trading, a long and a short of the same amount. Since our long position and our short position are within the same sector most of the time. Or better is also zero. So if I give you an example, if you're long Royal Bank and you're short TD Bank, the net result is a, a better around zero. Okay. Our market neutral ETF is better zero and dollar zero, whereas most of our market neutral peer group are mostly dollar neutral, but not better neutral. So in fact, most of all our peer group in the Canadian Liquid Alternative Group ETFs have a beta that is above zero. Okay. So number two, uh, why we we think we're different. So we we aim for positive return in any market condition. So in in the last, if you think about it, in the last eleven years, we call it the Great Bull Market. Okay. And let's take out two thousand twenty for now. There have been two negative years in the TSX, 2015 and 2018. The same strategy in 2015, when I used to manage it at Professional Financial, the, the, the strategy was up during that year, 2015, when the market was down approximately minus 9.7%. In 2018, the other year where, where, the, the, where the market was negative, the same strategy now at DGAM, return a had a positive return when the market was down approximately minus nine percent and all that with a hundred percent positive month in 2018. now let's go back to 2020 where we we all remember because it's it's only been like a few months and we of course we we all confine in our house now so 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 in 2020 as you already know s p 500 had its worst first quarter performance ever, losing 20%. The Dow Jones also had its worst overall quarter since 1987, while the S&P 500 had its biggest quarterly loss since 2008. We had extreme volatility uh, with this market, market falling 35% in only 32 days. So if you compare to 2008, the volatility of 2020 is actually even higher than what we, we, we remember during the financial crisis. We even had three days with market falling more than 10%. So despite all that volatility, our ETF, the DANC, returned nearly 1% positive return for March and approximately 2.5% return since the beginning of the year. Okay, if I just compare this to our peer group, just in, just for, for a comparison, the Canadian liquid all ETF group was down approximately minus 6.6% for the month of March, minus 9% if I use end of March, and minus 3% if I use end of May. Okay, so, so now we're getting to the third point, which is my, 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 my favorite point, and this point really differentiates or strategy, this ETF versus the versus our pair group, which is that one, we have zero correlation with traditional stocks and bond investment. 
And number two, low volatility. So I believe that we are a real low volatility product. Okay. If you, if I ask you the question, like, you know what, what's the volatility of the TSX or the S&P 500? And the answer to that question is, uh, is that I would say, you know what, 15 to 16%. But if you include this year, this extreme volatility year, I would say more in the 20%, right? So, so if I ask you another question, well, how about the, those low vol strategies, right? I would say, you know what, pre-2020, let's say 12 to 13%. But if you include 2020, I would say maybe more 15, 16, 17%, okay? So, so now if I take the liquid alternative ETF group, long, short, or market neutral, is constructed with a volatility between the range of 8 to 10%. So in fact, if I, if I take a one-year window, so I include the, the, the six months of 2020 and the six months of 2019, a one-year window, their volatility is anywhere between 3.5%. That's the, that will probably be a, a hedge fund that is uh, mainly use a bond strategy to 39% for some long, short uh, a, a liquid alternative strategy or ETF. The DNC ETF one year volatility is approximately 1.6%. So, so basically, at 1.6%, we're around 10 to 11 times less volatile than any market out there. I mean, I'm using TSX and SP 300, and I would say five to seven, five, five to seven times less volatile than any other liquid alternative product out there. So, so that those two points that I want to hit on is the low volatility and the zero correlation really puts us apart from our peer group. So, so uh, uh, one one of the other point I I can point out is that we're simple. We very we only invest in large cap liquid Canadian stocks and large cap U.S. stocks. We use no leverage. If you you don't count the safe and liquid money markets. We use no leverage. But a third point, we, use, we don't use any option. We don't use any forward. We just simply very simple to understand. And my last, last, last point, I promise, is that we have no performance fee. We only charge a, a management fee of around 1%, and that is it. So now the question to me is like, well, well, that looks great, Tom, uh, Tommy. So how do you do it? So uh, give me – I'll – you know, go really right now. The, the goal of this uh, this webcast is not to, for me to come in and explain you exactly what we do because that would take me a lot more time. But but in, in simple words, how do we do it? So we have three core pair trading strategies that we use to generate alpha. Right. The first strategy we call it fundamental strategy. We leverage the know how of our eight investment specialists. So, so Jerome and I, with Jerome is my who is my co-manager of this strategy, we will pick their best timely investment ideas as long position, and most of the time, we use a sector ETF or very similar companies to take out sector risk and market risk. We don't wake up in the morning trying to find trying to short Tesla or trying to find the amazing idea to go short. We use Sector ETF. Basically, we try to isolate the alpha from our best ideas, okay? And we take out market risk and we take out sector risk by using most of the time a sector ETF, and the resulting is the alpha. The second strategy that we use, we call it, we call it reversion to the mean. So we find strongly correlated security, like that has tendency to reverse back to the mean. Well, give you an example, banks with banks, very correlated sector, right? Or telecos with telecos, utilities with utilities, or, or pairs of companies like Loblaws and Weston, Power Corp and Power Financial, CP and CNR, or in the U.S., Johnson Johnson and United Health. And our third strategy that we use, we call it our arbitrage strategy. So it's investment opportunities that could appear, in particular, situation like M&A, disposition, usually like low risk 
in high reward situation. So let's start with, with showing you guys uh, some examples of of, uh, of you know of real parity that we, we we use in the past to to generate alpha. So so the first one um, uh, in, the, in in our example you'll see on the slide is that uh, is that we're long Kibikor and we saw short BCE, right? So so which which BCE and Kibikor are in the same sector. They're highly correlated, same industry, right? So Kebecor in around 2017 had higher EBITDA growth than BCE and the higher wireless growth also than BCE, yet it trades at a few multiple points below BCE. So if you, you would put, if you would uh, enact this pair, okay, uh, you would be long Kebecor and short BCE you will have made 18% return in 2017, okay? Uh, and if you remember, 2017 was the up year. The market were actually up in 2017. But then if you, you do this, you did the same thing, a long KB core and short BC in 2018, well, and you, you recall 2018, the market was negative. Well, this pair would still result in a positive return of approximately 28%. Okay. For our second example, uh, reversion to the mean pair, I would use a long BMO and short RBC. Again, BMO and RBC are highly correlated uh, uh, and historical vaccine shows reverse to the mean behavior. So if you would, would, if you would be long BMO and you would short RBC, the ratio between both of them trades within a band of one and 1.05. So if you establish a position when the ratio was at one and then wind it when the ratio is at 1.05, you could have generated a approximately a 5% return with low limited market risk. But then you can do the opposite. So when the ratio is at 1.05, you can, you can be long RBC and short BMO and unwind it when the ratio goes back to one. So actually, in the last five, I would say six years, you could have done this. You could have done this pair 14 times. And for a last example, we call this an event-driven strategy. I'll use Stella Jones as an example. On July 24, 2018, Stella Jones founder announced they are looking to sell share for successful planning reason. The share were offered to institution at a 15% discount to the closing price. If you would have bought Stella Jones stock at 50% discount and sold short a forestry name, let's say West Fraser, in the same sector, it would have resulted in a 12% return the same day. Again, low risk, high return. Okay, so so now let's go directly on on slide I'd say 18 to, just to finish my presentation. Well, well, uh, as you guys all know, uh, investment regulation uh, 8102 a very strict on disclosing performance number. Right. The beauty of an ETF is that you can simply do a simple search in our case DANC on your Bloomberg or Thompson's terminal, or even use Yahoo Finance to get our performance number. Therefore, rapidly, since the exception of this ETF ending May 2020, the performance of our DANC ETF or market neutral ETF is up 5.37% net of fees, which is around 367 dips over the 91-day T-bills. To show you our low volatility profile and our aim to preserve clients' capital, I'll give you a few examples. Between January 1st to March 31st, 2020, this year, the first three months of the year, the DANC ETF was up approximately 1.4%, while the TSX and S&P 500 was down minus 21% and minus 20% respectively. During the COVID-19 correction, so you can recall, when was the correction? The correction was, was between from February 19 to March 31st. The ETF DANC was up approximately.
approximately 0.66. So let's call it 1%. While the markets are down minus 25% for the TSX and minus 23% for the S&P 500. In fact, during the worst, the five worst day of this year on the TSX, market was down between minus 5.2% on March 23rd to minus 12% on March 12, uh, 2020. The DNC ETF now on those five days, right, varied between a loss of 0.23% to a positive return of 0.42. So three out of those five worst day of the year, the ETF DINC, the NAV, was positive. Our worst day this year, the DINC ETF NAV was down only 0.2 of a percent. So, so that brings me uh, to the end of, uh, of the presentation. Um, again, uh, thank you everyone. Thank you so much for, for your interest and your attention on, on this uh, presentation. So John, I'm giving you back uh, the micro. All right. Well, thank you for that, Tommy, and a great presentation. Uh, a lot of information to take in for the, uh, the audience there. We have a few questions that are coming in from the audience uh, as well, so we want to make sure that uh, we get to those. And I know Jerome is going to be joining us for, for some of these questions as well. So to the audience, uh, if you hear a different voice, uh, that's Jerome Lacombe, who, who's uh, joining in the Q&A to answer some of the questions as well. So uh, the first question here is, uh, how did your strategy perform during the recent market correction? I know you guys talked a little bit about that, but what I want to know more is sort of, you know, if I was an investor, would I have been up and down one day? Would it have been a smooth ride sort of? What would it actually have felt like to hold the product uh, during the recent market correction? So, Hi, long, yes. Long, it's a, it's a, oh, Jerome? Oh, sorry. Yes, hi, it's Jerome here. I uh, just want to, uh, yeah, hi, everybody. Thanks for being on the line. So I'm a PM co-managing the strategy with uh, Tommy Nguyen here at uh, DGAM. And, uh, and yes, so uh, thanks for that question. That's an excellent one. Um, the portfolio and the ETF uh, did perform exactly like we wanted it to perform during that market correction. Uh, our main goal, like Tommy mentioned, is really to have a product that is uncorrelated to uh, to the markets. So we saw the markets uh, dropping hard, and our strategy and our ETF did very well during that time. It didn't show at all on the strategy. Same thing also on the volatility of the product. The product did keep its very low volatility profile, and we still maintain we maintain our beta of zero against the market. So we did uh, very well, and this is uh, exactly what we want to uh, our product to uh, how we want it to react. Great, thank you for that. So one of the things Tommy mentioned during the the presentation here was that uh, one of the very nice features of this strategy is that it keeps it simple and doesn't get overly complicated. Can you give us maybe a few examples of? of not necessarily naming products, but more strategies within this sort of same um, you know, volatility construct uh, with a market neutral approach uh, that are more complex and, and can give it, uh, investors headaches. Uh, hi, uh, can you uh, reformulate your, your question? Uh, you want to sure, Tommy. What, to, uh... Right, so you, you said one of the beauties about your product is that it's a, it's a very simple approach. Um, to, to building the, the strategy and to building the ETF. That leads me to believe that, that other strategies could be more complex without necessarily naming another product. What I'm talking about or asking is, what are some of those other strategies that are more complex uh, that do tend to have a few more moving parts uh, than what you guys have that can often be uh, a distraction to investors? Well, to give you a, an answer of uh, that question, like um, like uh, like the other products are are well, some of them are different. Like it's not because you're you you're called a market neutral that you're necessarily better zero. I, I mentioned in my presentation. So most of the market neutral product that you see out there, okay, they're they're more more uh, dollar neutral than uh, better neutral. So give you an example. If you're you're long, uh, let's say a million dollar of uh, Loblaws. And then the other side, you're short a million dollar of of a Suncor or or a base metal company, right? You you could be dollar neutral, 
but your beta is not neutral. So, so with, with market volat extreme volatility that we see, you could see market neutral strategy having a, 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 a uh, let's say a big max drawdown. So, so that's how I, I see us compared to the others is that we're a real uh, market neutral, our beta is really zero, and our dollar exposure is really zero. So we can have like characteristic, like for example, uh, when I when I talk about about to investor about our product, I always come down to the the uh, the question of volatility, which I showed already, where we we were like m much lower, five to seven times less volatile than our peer group. And second, uh, I, I point them to the max drawdown. So you you would see other strategy called market neutral strategy, and when you look at that max drawdown, so what's max drawdown? It's it's the highest point to the lowest point. So how how did the strategy react? Right from 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 the highest point to the lowest point, you'll see that our max drawdown, okay, of this product uh, after going through extreme volatility in 2020 is minus 0.35 percent. It's and and if I compare it to our peer group, it's anywhere between minus 11, minus 16, minus 27 percent. So. So you won't you you won't be able to sleep at night if I tell you well in any given day uh, the the strategy you invested in well based on historical data you could have lost eleven percent and and from the top to the bottom well you will you you won't feel comfortable right and if I tell you our product the DANC well you know what our our max drawdown was minus zero point thirty five minus zero point thirty five is it's, it's yeah it's negative because it's called a max drawdown but it's not that bad it's, it's less than a percent so so other strategy use leverage we we don't use leverage so so I, I I try to explain like like most of the hedge fund product market neutral product out there they long stock that they long they like they short stock they don't like and then they use leverage in our in in our product what we do is we buy money markets safe and liquid money markets and we use that as collateral so therefore of all is lower right and if you don't count if you don't count the money markets as leverage well then our product is is not leveraged compared to the other product that which are which really use leverage for real right so so that that there are different strategy out there but i think ours is is unique uh, but, and by just show you some some characteristic, some risk characteristic, like uh, I was talking about max drawdown, I was talking about volatility. You you see you know re pretty rapidly that we we're different than 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 what our peer group is doing, are doing. Yeah, thank you for that. And that's that's sort of exactly what I, I was looking to to get out of that. So appreciate that, Tommy. One of the things that, that we always hear at Inside ETFs when we're doing our research and we're talking to advisors around uh, MinVol products, market, market neutral products, factor products, whatever it might be, it's thematic ETF, doesn't matter what it is. One of the things they always say is that it's hard to convince clients to hold on to products uh, when they're, they're not working. So, you know, if you're, you know, have downside protection and, and a little bit of the upside and it's in a bull market, it doesn't look like it performs as well. How do you guys talk to advisors about putting this into uh, a portfolio maybe during a bull market before we get to something like we had uh, in February and April of this year with volatility? How do you convince them that it's a good idea to, to own this hedge uh, before they actually need it? Well, I always have the time, right? I, I think that, that this, this, this product, uh, this DANC product should be part of a client's portfolio, right? If you, if you mix your, your, like your, your, your traditional stock, your traditional bond, and then you mix the traditional bond and, and, and equities, right? With, with a product that has no correlation, right? With, with bonds and equity and you, and, and that has characteristics of very low volatility also, right? So, so what it does is basically it helps your client's uh, uh, portfolio reduce the overall volatility of uh, of the portfolio, which in turn helps them with their long term return objectives. And like I could say it, it, what what it does is it basically enhances your your risk and return profile of an existing portfolio. So, in my uh, humble opinion, I always tell clients like you know what you 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 should always include a a a a a, 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 a an alternative product, but not any alternative product. You have to pick an, a, a, an alternative uh, product that, or strategy that has to have zero correlation and very low volatility. Only when you find that product could the overall client portfolio uh, risk profile uh, uh, gets uh, reduced and that you, you can enhance what, what you call the, the risk return profile of the, your client's or existing uh, portfolio. 
fantastic. Yeah, no, that, that, that's great. So to me, it sounds like you would use this more as sort of uh, a piece of your core rather than more of a satellite strategy to a portfolio. Is that a fair assessment? Yes, it is. Okay. So we have some really good questions coming in from uh, the, the audience. So one of them here is, uh, why are you so transparent about your strategy compared to others where the strategy is often in a black box? Well, 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 thanks for the question. Uh, basically, we we, we want to open the the black box. So, so when when I talk to um, to investor, they, the the question they always ask me is like, you know what? Uh, I don't, I don't normally invest in hedge funds because it's opaque. Like we we don't get the performance uh, every day. Uh, they 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 send the performance every month, and we never know uh, during that one month period. You know uh, well, how how their performance, how how they reacted. Like uh, some of them says they're they're better neutral, but during that month, well, they they increase their better. So they are, they're gonna do directional bet, right? So so what we do uh, for this product is one, it's it's an ETF product, right? So so you can basically every day using your Bloomberg terminal, your Thompson terminal, uh, type the symbol DNC, and you can see the daily performance, or you can even see the daily vol of the strategy, right? So days when the market is down, let's say like today when the market is I think uh, well, at uh, 9.30, market was down 1%. Well, you can really see, well, how, how does the uh, DNC, how does our market control react in a day where the market is down 1%, right? And the, the second point and the, that I'll give you is that for, 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 for an advisor that, 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 that requests, we do send a, a daily email. So every day at around 5 o'clock, 5.30, we send to the advisor that wants a, a full picture of, of the characteristic of a portfolio. So you will get a uh, performance a day, a performance uh, a month a day, performance year to day. You, you'll see the better of the portfolio, which is zero. You'll see the dollar neutral of a portfolio, which is zero. And you'll see all other characteristic, a uh, risk characteristic of a portfolio in, in, inside that daily email that we send to our client. And the reason why I do this is I, I, my, my goal, my aim of our team is we want our client to sleep at night by when they own our product. So by opening the box, they could see everything. They, we, we're literally opening the hood of a car, and we show to the investor, this is how we do it. Uh, you could check, you could be our risk manager. You could check every day that our beta is zero, that the dollar exposure is zero. So therefore, you could sleep at night. So, so that, that's the aim and the objective of this product, is to preserve capital. Fantastic. And I think if anyone is uh, going to take a point away from today, I don't want to necessarily speak through it, Tommy, but I think that capital preservation is a really good thing to think about uh, when you're looking at, at these types of products and what you want them to do uh, for your clients. So we still have lots of great questions coming in here, Tommy. So uh, I want to get right into the next one. Uh, it's what is the turnover of the fund and what are the costs associated with that? Jerome, you want to answer that question, Jerome? Uh, yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, that's an excellent question. So in terms of turnover, uh, we're quite active with our pairs because uh, it's a, like Tommy mentioned previously, we try to put those pairs in the portfolio at the best moment in the year. So it, uh, there's a high turnover in the pair, but we don't uh, calculate necessarily a turnover rate. The way we see it is how many pairs we put in the portfolio during any particular year. So uh, if we look at the past, uh, historically, it's been uh, around 300 pairs in the portfolio, plus and minus. So this is, this is how we, we see it. And, and most of the, to add to Jerome, most of our pair are, are let's say we call this, uh, uh, has catalyst, right? Inve uh, like uh, investment-driven uh, research, right? So, so basically, uh, in an example of a reverse to the mean, when I give you an example of a BMO and RBC reverse to the mean, well, we don't, we can't tell you how long uh, that uh, when would that reversion to the mean happen? It could, it could revert uh, in, in 24 hours or it could revert in five months. Right? So we don't decide when does a pair or our pair uh, has a tendency to reverse. It just happens when it should happen. So, so sometimes, uh, like I said, it can happen in a day or it can happen in a month. So our turnover, which we don't calculate, well, depends on, on, on the catalyst. Right? So other pair, like we, we use fundamental analysis, where we, we aim for a specific catalyst where, well, let's say, we think the company with their, 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 their liquidity could, could actually do a, a merger and acquisition this year. 
well, we don't know when the company uh, will do a, a M&A. We just know that, you know, based on our, our, the probability, based on the liquidity profile of this company and how they react in the past, well, we, we think that this year is a great year for them to do an acquisition, right? But the acquisition could happen tomorrow or it could happen in six months. But let's say it happens tomorrow. Well, if tomorrow happens, therefore, the catalyst is, uh, that we, we were looking for is reached. If the cali is reach, well, we have to unwind the pair, right? So that also is included in their turnover, which we don't really decide. It's very timely uh, pair training that we, 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 we're doing. Thank you for that, Tommy. So I, I have a quick question, and it always helps, I think, a lot of times for, for the audience. If you could walk through maybe the, the ABCs and the one, two, threes of a pair trade, I know that you've given examples. Uh, but maybe talk a little bit about exactly kind of what the, the mechanics are, what the action is uh, of a pair trade. So just getting a question, well, well, let's say uh, uh, we have, like, like, like I said, like, uh, if you want from, from the beginning, well, we, we, we uh, like I said, we're an investment professional. Uh, we manage like uh, Kenyan and U.S. equities. Uh, what we do with our investment team, uh, the, the eighth investment professional, we spend the whole day uh, talking to the company, doing our models, uh, looking for research, like, you know, analyzing companies. And basically when, when one of the, the, the we, we call them our specialists, well, we, the way we, we structure is we have eight investment specialists, five or, or five per PM, basically are what we call a sector specialist. Each sector specialist, is, they specialize in three to four sectors. So when they come to me and Jerome say, you know what, I like this company, it has a catalyst, uh, I think uh, this catalyst could be reached this year uh, and it could start, let's say, in August. So we could put this pair on. What I, my Jerome and I, what we do is we find the, the perfect short with that, with that long, let's say, for example, if I, I talk to you about, let's say, Brookfield Asset Management, bam, well, then, then, then me and Jerome, we say, okay, what, what's the perfect uh, short against it? Is it, is it the, the, the ETF XFN? Well, FN is the financial service. Is this going to be? Is it going to be Blackstone? Are we going to use Blackstone in the U.S. to short against BAM? Right. So, so that the shorting part is not to uh, is not to actually generate alpha. The, the 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 short part is just to come out and take out the market risk and take out the sector risk. Right. So Jerome and I we decide who's the short part of it, and the specialist or our PM basically finds the long part. So, so, so the way the way we construct the portfolio basically is to eliminate risk, uh, sector risk, and market risk uh, inside the portfolio, and we can, then we calculate the beta of the portfolio, right? So, so adding this pair, how does that affect the beta? Or is the is the beta still zero? If it's yes, we can put the pair on. And Jerome and I will also decide on the degree of conviction. So, so if the 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 specialist basically has a high le high level conviction, then we, now Jerome and I will decide the weight of the portfolio. Like I said in presentation, or eighty percent of the time the weight is around one percent right but if if we find a pair that that is, is low volatility and really high conviction well the pair could have a bigger weight could be three percent of the fund or four percent right depending on, on on the degree of conviction and and, uh, and and on the volatility profile of the pair john Sorry about that, guys. I was on mute. I was uh, rambling away there. Uh, so this question is a, a rather quick one here. Uh, have you ever considered establishing a similar product outside of Canada, e.g. in Europe, Asia, uh, or elsewhere? Uh, so, so and what I think question, they mean by so, that, Tommy, so, yeah, well, uh, is well, like actually having now, it listed no. in those markets. Well, no, we we have we we, we we I don't think we're we're planning to list uh, this product or having a a product outside of North America. I think uh, our team uh, again, the even eight, eight investment specialists. Well, we we our experience is is based on North America market, right? So Canada and U.S. And we we're comfortable with this market. And you know what? This market is big and large enough. If you include the U.S. and Canada together, so 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 we we uh, like I said, we we like we 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 did what 350 or 347 pairs last year. So we have enough ideas in our three core strategy. So so we don't need to go, let's say, outside of North America to find ideas or or build a product uh, uh, for for targeting uh, that that side of the market. Right. So I think there's another side to that question as well, Tommy. So uh, if I was a European investor and I am, I'm sat here in London, 
if I wanted to, to buy this product, would, it's not available to me on the London exchange yet. I think what they're asking is, would you ever consider taking this Canadian and North American strategy and allowing European investors to, to access it? So not necessarily you moving into the European market from a portfolio management standpoint, but actually allowing European investors to access your North American strategy. Well, well, if we if we hear that we have a lot of interest, uh, I I will not see why we 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 couldn't do it, right? So so it's all depending on 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 uh, of interest level, right? So if there is interest, uh, um, you know, I don't see why we 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 wouldn't couldn't would do or wouldn't do it, right? So it, it all depends on. on so the answer to your question is yes, if there is interest. Gotcha. Well, I'll I'll continue to keep uh, eyes and ears open and see when you're listed on the the London Stock Exchange, so I can go ahead and get get some uh, uh, some assets allocated to the fund. But uh, moving along, we have a question in and around correlation. So, uh, what is the correlation of the the ETF with U.S. Treasuries and, and Canadian government bonds? Yes. Hi. It's, well, the uh, answer that, well, Jerome here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, this is a very specific question, uh, so uh, I'll try to answer, answer this one. Most, we do track uh, correlation to most of the systematic factors, and the correlation is basically really near to zero with most of them. Uh, for the 10-year US, it's, I think it's minus 0 0.06 uh, since inception, so it's quite low, it's really next to zero, and it's basically the same that we see with most of the markets. Uh, our strategy, like Tommy mentioned, is really neutral. When we, you go long and short a stock in the same sector most of the time, they both have the same characteristics. So the net of this, going long and short, well, you neutralize all those characteristics. So you just get the alpha from it as a resultant. So, uh, so when we do the stats and on our pairs and our whole portfolio, correlation is really next to zero. Gotcha. Thank you for that. So uh, let's keep moving along here. So we have a, a whole bunch of questions coming in again from the audience. So how do you overcome interest rate risk with market rates so low right now? Well, look, uh, uh, to answer that question, how, how you overcome interest rate, I, actually our product is great when, when interest risk uh, uh, rates are so low, right? Because you look at that 10-year U.S. bond is yielding you 0.6, or Canadian is like somewhere 0.54 for the 10-year, right? So, so don't forget, like our 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 our, our structure behind our structure is money market. So, so we do get some some return out of money markets, which which in this type of our last year, if you ask me that question, the money market was around like let's say 1.3, 1.4%, and this year is much lower than that because it's all in this world everything's relative to everything right so so in in an in interest rate risk environment that's really low uh, has no effect on on what we do we we concentrate on pair trading in the equity side so uh to answer that question um uh we don't need to overcome anything we don't have any interest rates uh, risk uh, at all in our product okay thank you for that, that that's great to know so uh if the beta of each pair's trade trade fluctuates over time, how do you manage the beta of the overall portfolio? Yeah, this is uh, hi, it's Jerome. This is an excellent question too. Uh, so um, our risk management is really tight. We really look at the portfolio, each pairs, each stock, the whole portfolio, and to manage the beta, it's uh, it's true that on a single uh, individual name beta can vary during time, but we always look at it also as a portfolio. And, and, and this is the key. You don't want your portfolio to deviate from uh, beta neutral. So this is how we look at it. And if needed, we could adjust some pairs or the weighting of some pairs uh, if they tilt the beta of the portfolio, but we, it didn't uh, happen that we had to do such things. So. Uh, most of the pairs in the same sector, they do tend to have a really similar beta, so there's no tilt on that side. Okay. Uh, so, gentlemen, we're we're coming up, pushing on, on our uh, hour here with about 10 minutes to go, so we'll probably have time for maybe uh, one or two questions, and I certainly want to leave you guys with an opportunity to sort of uh, remind the audience of what they need to know uh, from today's webinar, and then certainly I want to thank everyone uh, for joining us. So just about 10 minutes or so left. So uh, here we go. 
Uh, your sell discipline is to unwind uh, a pair after it drops by 20 basis points, uh, I believe. So what is the turnover and what are the costs to that? Well, yeah, uh, so, uh, oh. oh, please go ahead, Tommy. Oh, so, so basically, uh, well, uh, yes, we, we have discipline. Um, base, basically, a pair, when, when a pair loses more uh, than 50 basis points, so 0.15%, well, automatically our trader alerts the whole team. At 20 basis points, automatically, there's no question asked, the, the pair is unwind. So, on, 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 and uh, up to now, since the exception of this ETF, I, uh, we have not hit any stop loss on any pair. Uh, uh, since the inception of this ETF. Uh, and the, the question after that is, what are the costs? Well, you know what? Uh, uh, the, when we calculate the NAV, so if you look at the ANC and, and the, well, the, 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 NAV, the NAV includes all the costs of all transactions, right? So, so the only cost we have in the portfolio is the managing fee, which is 1%. All other costs, all transaction costs is included into the, in, into the NAV. So the performance that I was, I was mentioning in my presentation all that includes all costs of unwinding and then turnover and uh, and activating pair trade or putting a pair trade on. It's all into the NAV. Okay. Uh, so, gentlemen, uh, I have a couple of questions left for you here. Uh, one of the questions that came up is, why do you guys uh, avoid options? I know it's a relatively safe uh, strategy that you guys are running, but but why the avoidance of options? Because we want our, our advisor, when I explain to the client, to, to want, want them to explain something that's very simple. And once you enter the option world, while well, you talk about leverage, now now we, we don't want to have leverage also. And our strategies, like we, this strategy was was not was built before 2019. Like we we I I personally managed the same strategy when I was at like I said I was a mentioned professional financial, and we never used option. Right. So so we 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 do things that we're, we we are good at. Uh, and we do things that we, we, we do every day, which is like fundamentally finding good stock and take out market risk uh, through an ETF or to a stock that are, are, are very correlated or in the same sector. Right? So that's what we do. Using option, uh, I would ask you a question, how you short an option? How you, uh, can you control the beta when you put option? So this is complicated. So we, we didn't want to build a complicated product. We want our product to be simple. So when an advisor sits down with a client and, and, and explain what, what do we do, the, the, we want them to say, the client to understand that this is a, a simple structure, simple strategy. And you, you can actually explain this to your client. Uh, uh, you know, of course, it takes some, some knowledge and some explain to do, but it's, uh, if you compare our, our strategy with, with all the other hedge fund strategy out there, we pretty much very simple to understand. Absolutely, and simplicity works. Yeah, and we know simplicity works when it comes to to ETFs, and we know that uh, for advisors to explain um, products to their their end users, you want them to be able to understand that people won't invest in things. Uh, they don't understand or are afraid of. So uh, Tommy and Jerome, we're, we just have about seven minutes or so left here. Uh, I want to give you guys, you know, maybe two to three minutes if there's anything that you want to remind the audience about today's um, presentation or about the product. You know, the, the mic is yours for two or three minutes, and then I'll uh, thank everyone for attending uh, and send them on their way. Well, well thanks, uh, thanks, John, and thanks, everyone, for uh, to, to be here and, and listening to, uh, to this presentation. Well, I just want to remind you, like, we – like like uh, I built this product for for mom and pops. Literally, like like I, when my professional financial basically um, our, mainly our clientele was was all professional, uh, doctor, dentist, engineer, all that. So so when I built this product inside of uh, when I used to be a professional financial, it, my my target audience was the mom and pops. Uh, like my audience was 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 clients like my parents. I don't want them to see a minus 20%. Like, like, like for me, that'll be a disaster. So I built a product that I, I w this product would never do 20, 25%. Of, you know, it would never do that. 
right? I aim for five, six, seven percent. So if you ask any any client, any any advisor, well, well, what number do you put on your system? If you 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 try to do a profiling or you, a projection of of a retirement, uh, like when you're 65, well, mainly people put five, six percent as their objective. You can do five, six percent every year, and after 20 years, well, you reach your retirement objective. Well, that's the same objective that I have. Like a, a five, six, seven percent uh, percent uh, return, no volatility, no correlation. That's very important for me. Better zero, dollar zero, and and you know what? Like a lot of people, like you know, the, the success of this product. Well, I I, I went on a road last year, Pen Canada. I, I met like over a hundred uh, advisor, and people ask me all the time. You know what? I love the product. It's it's too good to be true. Or well, how would this product react in that 2008, 2009? And I would tell them, look. Uh, I don't know how this product would react in 2008, 2009 because I, I wasn't the product wasn't there. But the last 10 years, the only two years where the market was negative, this product was positive, right? But now you include 2020, you include 2020, and like I said in this presentation, we had extreme volatility, really, really black swamp. So if I tell you, well, like yeah, I know that the market is up uh, 42% since the last, let's say, 50 days. But now, like, like market is nearly back up, uh, let's say, positive year to date. Where do we go from now? Like, like, like is, is Wall Street and Main Street, does it reflect what you see out there? The, the answer is no, right? So, so there is going to be volatility from now to the next few years, right? So the best way for you to protect your clients, uh, preserve your clients' uh, capital, I, I personally, I really believe, is, is using having this product inside your client's portfolio. And, and again, I, I put a lot of emphasis on the max drawdown. There's a lot of competition out there. People are to, to tell you, oh, we are market neutral, we aim for absolute. First thing you do, look at max drawdown. So, so highest point to lowest point, what's your max drawdown? If you see a, a strategy that they say it's better neutral or dollar neutral, but the max drawdown is minus 12%, well, you know that you cannot sleep at night so this that that you cannot trust this or you could trust this product, but but it won't have in black swan environment. Well, it will not protect you, right? So if I look at that strategy, uh, uh, top of my head, I think there's forty something liquid alts uh, out there. Well, you know what? Uh, if you look at end of uh, March thirty uh, first, I think there's only like three, two to three uh, hedge fund or a liquid alternative that was actually positive here, and we're one of them. Uh, we were the one with with the lowest ball out there. We're the one with the lowest max drawdown out there. Uh, we are the one with the most transparent out there also. And, and this product is aimed for, for the mom and pop of this world, right? The, the one that, that don't want to lose 20%. They just want the 5%, 6% every year. You know, we, we're hanging singles. We never aim from home run. We, aim, we, we, are, we, we, we are in a baseball term. We're single hitters, right? So that's what we aim for. High batting average, like a lot of singles. We want to do the, the, our objectives 5 to 7% with very low vol and zero correlation. So I think that's, that's my message to, to, uh, to mainly every advisor that I meet. I always tell the same thing. I built this product for, for my parents. That's like exactly what I, what I did. And, and hopefully the last uh, six months of this year, we, we, we could show to everyone that we, we, we actually respected what we did. And we actually show result that they were exactly what we, 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 we pitched to our, to our clients and our, and our investors. Well, Tom, I, I want to thank you for that. I think the one thing, uh, and I certainly don't want to speak for, for you or Jerome, but it feels to me like this would be a great opportunity for maybe advisors who missed out on this product uh, in mid-February when the volatility started that now might be the time to talk to their clients um, and add them back into the, the portfolio as uh, I do think we'll see some volatility increase as markets start to reopen and people start to, to leave their house. And if the recovery is not as quick as many people are expecting, uh, we could see some volatility in the market. So now might be the time to, to get ahead of the curve. So with that, I want to thank Tommy and Jerome. I want to thank Desjardins uh, for sponsoring today's webinar. We appreciate the support. Our audience appreciates the support. Uh, to our audience that dialed in, thank you. To those that submitted questions, uh, thank you very much. Please do remember to join us again at 3 o'clock today, Eastern Standard Time, for, for part two of our five-part webinar series. We'll continue to look at ETF solutions uh, that can help you and your clients during these uncertain times. So again, that starts at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. With that, thank you to everyone who joined us. Thank you again to Jerome uh, and Tommy, and thank you to Desjardins. We'll see everyone again today uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.